Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spake to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, and leaves the sheep, and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep, and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice, and they will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This command I received from my Father. Therefore there was division again among the Jews. Because of these sayings, and many of them said, He has a demon and is mad. Why do you listen to him? Others said, These are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Well, if you have your Bibles, turn to that portion that we read together. And we're considering just that thought of a shepherd during the last year. Every one of us has known what it is to have felt at least some anxiety. A touch of fear has gripped many a heart. And life isn't easy at the best of times. And actually, perhaps for many, the last number of months has been very tough indeed. Actually, we're not supposed to go through life alone. That was never God's intention for our existence we are to live uh, dependent upon him. And this book tells us that there is one who will care for us, who looks after us, and there is one, even this day, very important, who will lead us. I never thought, perhaps you would have thought, perhaps at a time, that you needed a shepherd to lead you. But such has been the year that we've gone through, we've realized that we have become locked in, paralyzed. That can happen in life without COVID. What can happen is we can become imprisoned by many things, by our sin, our wrongdoing. And instead of being people who are free to go, we are people in our lives which know we're imprisoned in some form. Those are blessed words, aren't they? Which we have and we know so well is that he makes us to lie down in green pastures and he leads us beside still waters. 
He leads us in the paths of righteousness. And you know something? That's something you and me cannot do. We cannot lead ourselves in this world by still waters. We, we can't lead ourselves in those paths which are right. And in these verses then this morning, from John chapter 10 and verse 7, which we're going to begin, where Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep that we have before us this morning, one of those great uh, I am sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ. And actually, when you read it, you realize that Jesus is not speaking these words to his friends. He's not speaking these words to his disciples. But as you read there, he said to them again, and we know who these people are. Those were the ones which were against him. And Jesus makes one of those categorical, once again, uh, these sayings, most assuredly, truly, truly, I say to you, he says it to the world, to those who are against him. And if anybody ever says to you that Jesus never claimed to be God, you have to say you must have lost your mind or you can't read. Because when you turn to these sayings, Jesus time and time again claims to be the great I am. And in those seven sayings, you have now this wonderful one, I am the door. And when you read this, you understand that when Jesus came into this world, the message that he came to preach was about himself. Jesus Christ is the answer to our every need. And you would, it's not about what we do or how to live, but it is about himself. Now, there can't be anything worse or more abhorrent or even to turn you off from listening that when a preacher preaches about themselves. But that's what Jesus Christ did all the time, everywhere. He spoke about who he is. And when you begin to open up the page, you begin to realize that this person, Jesus, is like none other. And he speaks these words, as we said, not to those who are for him. And he says, truly, most assuredly, I am saying to you, I am the door of the sheep. And this morning, just simply from verse 7 to verse 9, these uh, two points, considering now the shepherd, that we need to know something about him. And perhaps you need that in your life. You've come to a dead end. You've come to a brick wall. You've come to a place you cannot move. You come to life and you're stagnant. What wonderful words they are. I am the door. And you have one in which you can come and you can go. This great claim of the Lord Jesus Christ. And first of all, very simply, because it is simple. That's how Jesus taught. Jesus came. And you know, every single person can understand on one level of what he's saying. Do you know the, the child, as young as a child may be, people who can't read or write, people from all over the world, of every age, in the whole of history, could understand this. I am the door. Every one of us knows this morning. How many doors have you come and you've gone out of? The door of your bedroom, door of your bathroom, door of your kitchen, your front door, your car door, the doors of the church. And the Lord Jesus Christ, he comes and he says, look, I am the door of the sheep. How many doors have you walked through in your life? Going to school, school doors, work doors, office doors. Some have known prison doors. And the Lord Jesus Christ can say, now listen, you may have walked through many doors in your life, but have you walked through this door? The door of the Lord Jesus. I am 
the door uh, to the sheep. And what Jesus is speaking of here is telling us of who he is in this world. He is the one who is the entrance and the exit from this world uh, to the next world. That the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who in this world is able to give you the freedom to come and to go in your life as God wanted you to be. Jesus Christ is proclaiming in a very serious way of, of the fact that when you've come uh, to a place that you need him, the door. Let me describe it like this. In the project we've had as a church in our building project thankfully now with people in the gallery good news for you there is going to be a an emergency exit and that always worried me that when people came to this place you know there was not a, an exit if there was a fire and you were caught there was only that porch and you could then be caught and trapped and you know you need in this life you know, an exit, an emergency one to the world which is to come. But what's even more even serious is this. But every week in a world which is perishing, the news has gone out. There is a door of escape. And the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world. That's what he's saying here at this point when he says, that's what I am to my sheep. Remember last week we described that sheepfold it was made of stone. It stood about 10 feet high. It was circular with a very narrow entrance. And what used to happen was that the shepherd would bring the sheep into the sheepfold. And what took place was the sheep had to be there for the dangers, the dangers they were exposed to, uh, the fact that they would be safe. There was a place of safety. The Lord Jesus says, now listen, I am the door. Uh, from all that, the dangers in this life, the people who could get lost, I'm the one in which you can know of what it is to be saved. Now, it's a wonderful thing. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ himself is this very door. Let me explain it in this way. Because Jesus is very, very unique. In Jesus, and only in Jesus, he is both God and man, when you come to him, you'll find that of Jesus of Nazareth, he is God in the flesh. And when you meet him, you realize you're not just dealing with now things of this world. He's the one who is of eternity and of time. In Jesus Christ, he is the one who's come into this world to give us that way from this world. And in his life and his death and his resurrection, he says, listen, I am the door of the sheep. And you can come. And you can come and go and you can know that which is of him. And uh, he tells the world this, that his is categorical statement concerning himself. And as he tells them here, because he tells two things, there it is in verse 8. Uh, Jesus is quite plain. Uh, he doesn't mince words. I know we have a picture of him. But before these leaders, verse 8, not just who he is, but who these are also. All who ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. And uh, that's something for us to consider this morning. Do you know, although I've said to you that Jesus is the door, let me ask you this. Even though you've, you've come to him, that does not make us a Christian. Let me qualify that for a moment in verse 9, you see. It's everyone who enters by me. But the fact is, is that many come to him. All who ever come before me. And that's what you find in life. And... Jesus was on this earth, people came to him. These people did. But he calls them thieves and robbers. You know that because of verse 1. They are the ones who climb up another way. 
and he says they do not enter by the door. And there are such people in this world who will come to Jesus, and even though he is the way of salvation, even though he is the entrance to eternal life, even though he is the one who can bring us to God, there are people who will come, and they're like these Pharisees in one way. They want to climb up another way. They believe there's a way to heaven. There's another way out of this world, whatever religion it may be. And they think that there's another door. And Jesus says, do you know what you are? You're a thief and a robber because you take away from his great glory and his honor and his claim and his work and all that he has done. Take away from all that by trying in your own strength and your own ways. Now it's possible, you see, that there's many, even here this morning, that you can come to the door but never enter it. And one of the reasons why people don't enter the door is because of ourselves, how good we are, how, how great we are, and of our idea that we can solve and we can find our own way. You'd be surprised how many could actually come and study and look, even think what's behind the door. Some can, may have even come and put their hand on the latch, so to speak, but never gone through and walked that door. Now, you have come here, you've heard me say this many times, you have, you have come here today to a place of worship and you've entered in. You've come to Jesus Christ, but you've never entered in. You've come so far, but there's a step that you need all who ever come before me. To be honest with you, he says, they're thieves and they're robbers. But my sheep, they will not hear them. Because I'll tell you why. The person who is a Christian is someone who knows Jesus Christ. And when you come and you know Jesus Christ, you know that he is the only one that can give you that door to life. You see, there are many such doors we have walked through in our experience. So, for example, of opportunity. I'm not being silly and making this idea, but you know there are things that you have thought that if you walk down that path, you'll find your peace, your contentment, your happiness. But you found it wrong. Many people have gone a certain direction and they've only been disappointed. But when you become a Christian and you've entered into him, look, there's one thing you know. You say, oh, I'll tell you what. He is the door to life. And when you become a Christian, you, you know there is none other. Now look, for you who have got decisions to make, I know there are those who are thinking about education and those of university and those of business. Look, you need to walk through all those doors which are before you. But you realize there's only one that could ever bring you life and ever lead to eternity and to God himself. That's what you uh, find here. That's who Jesus is. But look now in verse 9 of what he's come to do for you and what we need. And there are two things, and how appropriate this is today, in the, in the day in which we live and the struggles we've got, even of thinking of going out, coming to a place of worship, having our lives back again. Look at this. I am the door, verse 9. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will go in and out and find pasture. Now, there are two things. Uh, first of all, that the, the Lord uh, Jesus Christ is saying is that when you come to, to him and you enter this door, you're going to have two experiences. You're going to know what it is to be saved, to be saved. They enter into the sheepfold. 
They had that security. They had that peace. They had rest. You'll know that in your life. But you'll also know this. A freedom to come and to go. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can do that. He can give you that uh, life which God wants you to live. And you're able to come before God and to do those things. Only Jesus can do this. He will do that in your experience. But first I need you to just pick up this point. If anyone enters by me. That's, that's wonderful. That this now door of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Who is both God and man in the flesh. That if anyone were to come to him. But not just come to him. Enter by him if you were to take that step this is what you will find and there are two things about that you see that this is for everyone to let no one think for a moment here that you're too young perhaps that's not to, <gasps> well if it was i know people used to think that you know i need to be older before i become a christian no there's no age limit which is over uh, this door. There is no sexism or, or gender equality. Anyone can come. Don't think there is anyone you see with ageism. That you are uh, too old to enter into this new life. Which he is able to give. And the rest that you want to find. Let, let no one be here today and think that they're, they're too bad that they could not come and enter into him. That there's something that you have in your life that this door is not open to you. You couldn't be further from the truth. The Lord Jesus Christ is for anyone who enters will find the fullness of life. And you will know that in your experience. But you have to come by faith. That, that's it. In a way that you need and know that Jesus Christ, I don't know if you've ever had that experience where uh, you may have passed a, a many a, a door, uh, perhaps a nice house, and, you know, you've thought to yourself, oh, I wonder what it's like inside. I wonder what it's like to go through that. And you're unsure. Well, when you come to the Lord Jesus, this is how you enter. You do it by faith. You do it believing. Uh, trusting in what he said. That you will be safe. And that you will find life. You can't do it by your baptism. You can't do it with confirmation. You can't do it with just ritual. You have to come to him. And you will, uh, you will find that life. Uh, and here's the point. In verse 9, you see, he who enters by me will be saved and he will go in and out and find pasture. If you come to him, he will save you. He is able to do that. The shepherd is able to do that. He is able to save you. He can save you from yourself. He can save you from your sin. He can save you from your mistakes. He can save you from hell. He'll save you from God's wrath. He can save you from everything that you need saving from. And that's what he will do. A person who comes to Jesus Christ is the person who knows what it is to be saved. Now I know that's old-fashioned terminology and old-fashioned words a kind of old-fashioned gospel or whatever that may be. But all I know is this. It's the reality of it. There's a sheepfold. Jesus is the door. You come to him and you will be secure. And you will know that in your life. The security and peace and rest which he can give. And you'll know it now in this life and in this 
world. That's what you know. And just this point, you will, don't be mistaken in any way. You will, you will find life. You know, one of the things I've noticed, uh, the salvation that God gives is so much better than, the, than this, the ideas that we've had over the last year. You know, the last year, we've been told to keep safe. That's all we've done. Keep safe. And uh, how do you keep safe? Oh, the way you keep safe, you're going to... I've got to lock myself in. Lock myself away. And people have self-isolated. And their whole lives have come to a total shutdown and lockdown. And I assure you, life has not been one which is filled with joy. And yet people think like that about the Christian life. This is what they think. If I were to come to Jesus Christ, that's what's going to happen to me. I, my life will be utterly restricted. I won't have the freedom to do what I would like to do, to be the person I want to be. If I were to come to Jesus, what's going to happen is going to spoil my life. That's the idea, isn't it? That's what you find here when Jesus says, hang on, and the door, you'll be saved. You can come in and you can go out. You can find pasture. But then people say, I can't. It's going to ruin my life. Now listen very carefully. <laughs> the salvation that Jesus gives you is not the salvation which you've just thought of in this COVID. That you're locked in, you're trapped, and you're imprisoned. You go and try the world. Try that. There are many people in the world. They may have left Christianity. Why? Oh, it was, um, it was too restrictive. No, you've got this wrong. You've got it really wrong. Religion may be very restrictive. Religion may put burdens and bind you in a way which Jesus Christ has no place for. There are things in religion which I assure you, yes, you will be utterly... And people think this salvation if they just withdraw. And then if they withdraw to a certain place in their living, they go, no, they're going to be... Yeah, that won't save you. And, uh, oh, I've, I've, I've left Christianity. Oh, why is that? Well, it was the way we thought it was... Uh, I've been liberated since I've, I've left, you know, the Christian faith. That's a joke. In this world, you will be bound by your sin, by the world, by others. You'll be as free as Harry. <laughs> He's been rescued. And he'll know what it is and what happens. And when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, I assure you this day, that's what he's able to do. He is able to save you and he will liberate you. And not only that, he'll do this in, in two ways. You'll be able to come and go. Isn't that good news? Well, I think so. I mean, you think in your life uh, of how you have been. You have been in some relationship, and before you know it, you're trapped. And you can't get out. Then you've left some relationship, and you're out. And you can't get in. And people know none of this is liberty. You come to Jesus Christ. And he says, I'm a door and it's an open door. And you'll be safe and you'll go in and you'll go out and you'll find pasture. A freedom that you've never experienced in life. You'll know that only Jesus can give such freedom. You say, how come? Because you know the dangers which are all around us which have trapped you in now, the COVID, that you can't even enjoy the things of life. No, Jesus is the good shepherd. He's the great shepherd. And with him, you can come and you can go. Uh, let me just show you of, of two areas where you can come and go with the Lord Jesus. First of all, obviously, it's, is that you can come and go to God, his heavenly father. Because in our experience, before we come to Jesus, 
we feel that we're on the outside and we're unable to get in. That's an experience that we have, is it not, when um, in our sin it separates us from God and we can't get over that great wall, the guilt which we carry, there's nothing we can do, we're just totally stuck and uh, there's, there's no freedom. I, I don't know if you've ever had the experience, you may have it when you first became a Christian. You started going to a place of worship and when you went to the place of worship, you realized, although you were in the place of worship, you still felt on the outside. You could never seem to get in. I mean, you were there, you were singing the hymns, but you were never in. And you know why? Because the only way you can get in is Jesus Christ. But when you come to him, look, you can come to God. Let me just give you this verse. It's found in the book of Romans, chapter 5, and verse 1. And he speaks of the person who's come by faith to the Lord Jesus. Wonderful things. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Look, through whom also we have access by faith into the grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. There it is. You come to him. And you can this morning know what it is to come to God. And pray to him and know him, have fellowship with him and enjoy him. You know that? That's good. But look, there's something else here. When you know Jesus as the door, he will lead you in your life to the life that God has for you here on earth. No, he will lead you to do and to be the person you were supposed to be, to do the things and enjoy the things that he's given for you to do. This is not God's will for you, I assure you, to be locked in, shut in, imprisoned in your life. You think, where did that come from? God, you see, but it happens. It happens because of our wrongdoing in our own lives before all this lockdown. And yet Jesus comes and he says, when you come to him, you will enjoy everything that he has got for you. And you can come freely. There is no greater freedom than that which is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. He truly is. You can come and go and you'll enjoy. Look, just one little thing to, to close in case I go on. You will go in and out and find pasture you see this is because now something that we need because we are not able to do this in our lives ourselves perhaps you've come to a place where you realize that with all my ideas and the direction i've taken my life to be honest with you at the end of it i've got nothing to show and i have found little joy and there's been nothing that has satisfied my soul and my heart. Because it's only the shepherd that can lead you in this life to places in a world which is filled with famine, danger, despair, and death. And you know that an emptiness all around, no matter what you touch. But Jesus says, look, I am the door. And uh, you come to me, you will be safe. You'll be able to come to God and you know heavenly blessings. You'll know what it is to go out and you will have pasture. Listen, as sheep, you're fed. And there'll be provisions and plenty. And it abounds and you'll find that pasture with the shepherd and you won't be looking for grass which is greener on the other side because you've come to be led where you know that there's a peace and stillness. You know this or that, as I mentioned, times of great refreshing, times of blessing, times with God's people, with his flock, times of communion, times of, uh, of great joy. 
I never found it. I never found that pasture which brought true and lasting joy into my life. But you know the Lord Jesus, he has led me. He leads you. He leads his sheep to such places. But you've got to understand, he is leading. And you will know that. Look, just to, uh, just to recap in one sense, there are certain things that you, you desperately need to know this morning. And it's very simple. It couldn't be simpler, could it? You know, the Lord teaches us in such little ways and good ways. See, I am the, the, the door. I'm not a door. You can try. And uh, I'm just one of many. No, no, you got that wrong. There is only one which is going to lead you to the path of life everlasting. And it is in him and through him. And just make no mistake, just to reiterate this point, you need actually to come to him. Thinking of Christianity, chapel or church, prayers, whatever it may be, you have to come to Jesus. And when I mean that, it means like this, that by faith, that you believe in who he said, I am, he is God. I am the way. And you know that in his life and death, there is peace. You have a relationship with him. And you come. You take the step, which you've never done before. It is a step. You enter into a life which is unknown because you don't know where he is going to lead but you just simply know he is the shepherd and he leads to those paths which are right you need to know this just to recap look there are thousands hundreds of thousands perhaps even millions yeah i think there will be millions in this world of seven billion people this morning which are looking for an exit. They're looking for a means of escape. People are looking for the next step to take but only a brick wall is before them. They can see no way out. And they're looking for the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what's even worse? Is that there may be, even this morning, in many places of worship, millions of people standing around the door, lying around the door, touching the door, putting their hand on the handle of the door. Hundreds of thousands of people at the door and never entering in. Look. Let's pray. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, our time in this place today has been very real. We have not gone through, Lord, emotions. We have not gone, Father, through ritual. But we are thankful that we have been able to come to you through the Lord Jesus Christ and have fellowship with you. We're thankful that in him we have known of you coming to us and that we have freedom to pray before the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We've been able this day to come and make our petitions, to bring ourselves even before your presence with the angels in glory and with the redeemed host in heaven. We are blessed that we have free access 
to glory and to grace. And we're thankful this day that in Jesus Christ, by that path which was shed and made by his blood, that we are able to stand. O oh, gracious Lord, we have come to this place today in a world which only knows of lockdown and shut in. And we're thankful for the freedom that you've been able to give us. We've been bound in our life by our own sin, our own thinking, our own stupidity, our own fears, our own anxieties. We have known what it is to be bound. We haven't done even what we're supposed to, to family and friends, because of fears which have come all around us. We're thankful this day that there's a freedom which is found in you. We're thankful that there's one who has promised to be with us and near us. And when we've come to this place, Lord, we don't deny that we have not come without some trepidation. We come, Father, with anxieties. We come, Lord, not as we used to, but we're thankful we have a shepherd and we believe that you're able to put your hand on our lives. You're above all things. You know all things. You control all things from the smallest virus to the greatest planets to the sun which shines you're the one who's in control we're thankful you've told us in your word that you are our keeper that you're the one who leads us in and leads us out you restore our soul and this morning we have come to know that may it be this day that as we have uh, come before you that you would refresh us for the week ahead there are many facing their work they have to go back to. Many facing jobs which are seriously threatening. Lord, many know of what it is that they are unable to do what they once did. May they come to you. For those, Lord, who have decisions to make. For those, Lord, in our own lives where we do not know where to turn. We're thankful that even when we've come to an end, you've made a way. And you've given us a door to walk through and in by which we can find life. This is a message, Lord, which many need to know. Would you bless then that message through the many places of worship which are meeting in this county, especially of Pembrokeshire, because you've put us here to be a witness and a testimony to you that there will be those who will find life this day, that there will be souls which will be saved Will there be those who will come to the knowledge of you? Please, Father, this day, for people are perishing, and many which have come to a place of worship, may, Father, give the gift of faith, give the gift of repentance, give the gift, O Lord, which is needed, that we will be able to come and enjoy that life in which you have for us. We ask you again for those which are going through difficult dark days and valleys there is Eleanor and those of this congregation which know what it is uh, to have known of death and darkness we think of those which are alone even of Kevin there in that hospital and the difficult times you know his mind you know his prayer keep the doors open Lord keep the doors open that would be our prayer this day, even in our land of Wales, that you would keep the doors open, that many will come to the knowledge of you. Gracious Lord, minister, please we pray for our family and our, for our friends who desperately need you, for those in leadership, for the queen, for the family, for all then who have gone through that loss even in these weeks. We commit it, we commend them to you. And Father, all in need. In Jesus' name, amen.